separately. So Dave, great question. You asked about strategy for using fast submit articles. I'm going to share with you what I do. Okay, now, once I share this with you, your mind might go wild with all the other things that you could do. Um, but this is what I do. I find it's very, very, very effective. I find that if I want to get a web page, whether it's on my site, whether it's on somebody else's site, or if it's an article page, if I want it to rank highly in the search engines for a keyword that's not too competitive and too generic, okay, I mean, I'm normally focused on longer-term keywords. They, I find they tend to um, – I don't even really focus on keywords. I focus on ideas. You know, people that are serious about making change, you know, my, my ideal prospect is somebody who's ready to make change in their life. I'm, I'm not looking for somebody that's um, – you know, just punching in a keyword here and there. I, I, my prospect, my ideal prospect is somebody who's, who really wants to make some real change. So they're, they're going to be using phrases and thoughts. They're not really going to be just using keywords, okay? So, so I, here's my strategy, especially for longer-term phrases and thoughts. If I take an article and I submit it to Fast Submit Articles, and in the resource box I put – an optimized anchor text link in in the resource box at on the article at fast submit articles um, I will normally get some traction to that page within a few days okay in terms of, of rankings um, again it, 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 this is one of those things it's so very subjective because it really depends on hey, what what's the phrase okay but it, I believe in fast submit articles so strongly I've used it you know, you could almost say covertly behind the scenes for years now that I believe in it so strongly that if I don't get results, then I assume that there's more competition than I think there is, and I'll submit another article with more links to the same place, and almost without fail, I will get top 10 rankings in the search engines for whatever that phrase is. So to give you an example of how I might do this, okay, um, let's think about an article over at Ezine Articles. Okay, now, if you don't know, you know now, almost all of my best traffic comes from Ezine Articles. Um, there's a qualifying process. I won't spend a lot of time on this because you folks know this, but you know this, Dave. But there's a qualifying process that occurs when somebody goes through that third-party site. Okay, because the best prospects are people that read an article, they, they they click down at the bottom. They don't even click into my website yet. They click down where it says article source, and it's my expert author page, and they skip over there, and they see how many articles, and they see my picture, and they read my resource box or my bio, and they click on a couple other articles, and one of two things happen. They, they either say, you know what, I don't care to learn from this person, which is really a great time for them to make that decision because that way they don't clog up my email campaigns. They, they don't clog up my autoresponder. They've self-identified themselves in, as not having an interest, which is fine with me. Okay. Then the, the second category of people are the ones that have clicked through three or four articles. They've read the, the, the bio. They've seen my picture. They've, they've kind of clicked around. They see that it's a pretty big website that I'm hosted on there. Okay. And they, they say, okay, now I'm going to go to the squeeze page. Well, by the time somebody gets to the squeeze page, after they've done all those things I've just suggested, this person already knows who I am. They believe I'm credible. They're beginning to trust me already. They believe that I have some level of expertise, and so on and so on and so on. And you contrast that to getting a high search engine ranking for a squeeze page in the search engine, okay, Somebody types in a keyword, gets my squeeze page, it says, hey, I'll send you this free gift if you put in your name and email address. That's a worthless lead. That really is. I mean, really. Talk about just throwing egg at the wall and hoping it hits. I mean, because even if they have half an interest in the topic, they, they, they don't know me. They forget me tomorrow. They, there's no trust. There's no credibility. I mean, the, the giveaway really has to hook them. The first few emails I send them have to be perfect for whatever their need is. Whereas if they come in through the article, I don't need to worry about any of that. 
the, the, whatever emails I send them, as long as it's got some decent content in it, they're going to appreciate them because they're going to see them through the light of being a credible source. Because of this, I would rather have an article on easing articles coming up in the search engines than for my own squeeze page to come up. Okay, now, what I do is I go through, and you, you, there's a few different ways you can do this. I mean, if you go into your member account at Easing Articles, you can just sort the whole account by, by click-through rate. Okay, you can also go into, and they, it, it's accessible, it's a new feature, it's accessible in the main panel. Um, I, I think it's called, uh, anyway, it's like a, a my uh, Easing Articles or something like that, but it's accessible through your, your member's campaign. And I, this may only be available to premium members. I'm a premium member, so I don't even know what's not premium and what is premium because it's just in there and I've had it for a couple of years. But anyway, this particular feature, you can go in and look at the actual clicks for the last 30 days as, a, as an aggregate of articles, and then that you can rank them by click-through rates. Okay, so if I have 10 articles, but the top 10 articles that have gotten the most number of clicks or views – in the last 30 days, out of those 10, I can probably assume that eight of them are high in the search engines. Okay? Could it be possible there's some other reasons? Well, yeah. I mean, if I send a link out to my list and send 400 people over to an article because I want them to read it, I have to remember that when, when I look at those stats and, and just – you know, I just know that. But eight out of ten of those articles, it should be a search engine issue. So we, we, we can look at those ten articles from the last 30 days. I can say, okay, these articles are coming up high in the search engines. And not only are they coming up high in the search engines, but let's say four out of those eight also have high click-through rates. Now, that's important to me because getting the views is useless if the people that are getting to it are, are not targeted for the offer. So let's say four out of the eight or four out of the ten are getting views and they've got a decent click-through rate. I can now make the logical assumption with, again, some margin of error. That I can make a logical assumption that these are search engine visitors that are reading the article and search engine visitors are converting into subscribers. And that's what I love to see. Okay? And so... At that point, I'm going to take those articles that are already showing some traction. I'm going to say, how can I get as much traffic as possible? One of the things I'll try to do, Dave, is I'll try to find out what the keyword is that it's coming up for. Okay, now, using articles will give you some of that data as well. You go verify it and find, find your article. Find it on the fifth page of Google, you know, wherever it is. If it's on the fifth page with probably one submission to fast submit articles, you can get it on the first page. Okay, so if it's getting views and clicks through the fifth page, I can really make something happen on the first page. And so I go to fast submit articles, I submit an article, a new article, a fresh article that has a link in it that is that is pointing to the easing articles article. Um, that is the biggest way that I used fast submit articles. And obviously, we could take this to another level. I mean, Fast Submit Articles is only one out of dozens of sites out there that, that the similar type of thing could be done. Okay, why do I use Fast Submit Articles? Well, because I always have. I mean, I have ever since I started using it. Okay, and I've always had good success. There's probably 25 other sites out there that do just as good, or but who knows, maybe even better. I mean, these, for me, it's proven. I know the guy that uh, the guy that, that runs it, that owns it, was on my list for some time. He bought from me. He personally introduced me to service. I've probably spent thousands of dollars with him over the years. I've recommended people to him. So there's, there's some reasons why I really like the place. But the biggest thing is I continue to get results. Now, could you take this to a supercharged level and also get additional links from other places other than just the 350 directories at Fast Submit? Yes. Could you also, here's another strategy. I've done this before. I don't do it as much now. It's cumbersome. You know, imagine now you've submitted an article to Easing Articles. You want to get it to rank in the search engines. So you submit another article to, to Fast Submit that has links to your article at Easing Articles. Okay, now, 
how can you make the articles that you submitted at fast submit articles have more juice, so to speak, to help boost that easy articles article? Well, get links to those articles. So let's say that you submit an article to fast submit articles, okay, and if three days after you submit it, you type in the title in quotes, you don't even need to use quotes. You can type the title in outside of quotes into Google. You'll come up with probably 20 instances of the same article on 20 different websites. Okay. Now, what you'll do is if you go in there and get some inbound links to the top five occurrences of those articles that have links to easy articles article, you'll get even more juice, you get more linking juice to that easy articles article. Again, the same so it really depends on how much effort. I mean what do you what do you want out of making this happen? Okay, I've done this for local websites, I've done this for my website, my websites, and I've done this for easy articles articles. Um, and this works and you can just you can take this out as far as you want. You can do as many permutations of it as you want. Um, and and it, as of today, Dave, it works. The next question, I'll open the call up in just a second, but, you know, the next question is, hey, why don't I share this more? Well, because this is one, you know, I, let's just say I teach 100 things, okay? Let's say I teach 100 things. Um, almost everything I teach is evergreen, meaning that it will work tomorrow. It worked five years ago. It will work five years from now. It will work 10 years from now. Some of what I'm teaching will probably work 20 years from now. The, this technique I just shared with you has worked for a long time, but it, it may not work tomorrow. It, it may not work a year from now, and, and I really try to stay away from teaching people things that are not evergreen. And so that's why I really shy away from teaching what I've just shared. Um, let, let me go ahead and open the call. Dave, does that answer your question, first of all? Yeah, that definitely answers my question. I've been uh, looking and, and researching and communicating with him uh, before I really jumped into it, and I'm, I'm so glad I asked you the question this morning. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. You know, I'd like to add one more thing to this before I open this, this discussion up to everybody. I want to add one more thing. After listening to me for the last whatever, 10, 15 minutes I've just shared, after listening – you may have the opinion or you may have the feeling that I'm opinion that it's all about links and that you could go out there and, and get on, you know, start buying links or, you know, go out there and find a whole bunch of services that have little self-propagating blogs and, you know, you can, you can buy access to all these blog networks and all of this. That's not the case. And, in fact, I advise against it. Okay. What's the difference? Well, the difference is that fast submit articles is simply a service that, for all practical purposes, recommends or submits your article to other websites for their editorial discretion. Okay, now, obviously, editorial discretion, we all know that some of them, some of those directories are just, you know, they're just automated, you know, if you submit it, you're going to get in there. Okay, but the key here is that that whole network is not related to each other. So the 350 directories or so that Darren uses over there, they're probably not the same from month to month. They probably vary from month to month. The same article directories don't accept your every article that you send. And there's this a huge amount of variability and editorial discretion. And Google wants editorial discretion in whatever's going on. If you go out there and you, you know, there's blog networks out there for 100 bucks a month or whatever, you can subscribe to a blog network. And so a blog network in this sense, in this sense, a blog network, I'm going to I'm going to give you one example of a blog network, okay? Blog network is is uh, Johnny decides he's going to create a blog network. And what he does is he goes out and he opens up 100 hosting accounts all over the world so that he has hosting accounts and blogs on a whole bunch of different servers all over the world. And he creates a blog on each one of those 100 servers all over. And it's an ex it, it may cost him a little bit up front. It takes him some time. But then he goes out and he sells memberships to these blogs 
for, let's just say, $100 a month. You pay $100 a month. You submit an article to him, and he, he puts it on 30 of his blogs in his blog network. Okay? At first blush, it looks like a good proposition. What happens is, over time, as the search engines realize what's going on with these forced networks that do not have editorial discretion, as they discover what's going on, they begin to blacklist those blogs, okay? and, and then you don't get anything out of them. The difference, and I hope I'm being clear about the difference, the difference with fast submit articles, and not just fast submit articles, there's plenty of other services that do a similar type of thing that fast submit does. Um, they they are not forcing, they're not using their own network, they're not forcing onto a network, and in fact, from month to month, that network, it's not a network, it's just a grouping of various companies, as opposed to being a, a blog network operated by one individual or one company, that although it's designed to look like it's a bunch of different entities, it's really not. And usually when things are just designed to look like a bunch of different entities, no matter how hard you try, you end up leaving some kind of digital signature behind. As soon as the search engines find the digital signature, they're able to devalue those links. Okay, And so, again, that's another reason I don't like to talk about this whole concept, because when I do, people sometimes tend to take it too far, and then they end up getting themselves in, uh, in, in trouble. They they get they start getting bad neighborhoods of links, mm -hmm. and of course they trace that back to to uh, to me that that I'm the one that put them on that path. And so I just want to be very very clear here. I'm talking about building a nice clean set of inbound links, a nice clean set of interlinking, and I I believe that fast submit articles is a good piece of making that happen. Uh, it's a little bit of a call. Any comments or questions specifically on what I've just shared about my strategy at easing articles, fast submit articles, and some other ideas there. Sean? Yes? Hello, this is Beverly. Hello, Beverly. Hi, I have a question that might be related to what you just said, and at the same time it might not. Um, I have a sub niche that actually is who the audience is. I'm going to say, in a sense, a small group of people around the world. In a sense, it's thousands, but not you know, it's not like the general public. And it's the audience basically are hypnotherapists. Okay, so I'm trying to think of how to get how to how to reach them. Uh, there are other, certain areas I have. I mean, easing articles um, doesn't mean that they're going to be reading that. You know, they're, um, so do you think fast submit articles or something like that would work? You know, how do they, I mean, do they, I mean, would that be a way to, you know, reach a broader audience of specific, of the specific group of people? Or any other ideas you have about reaching that? So here's what I'll do, Beverly. I'm going to answer that as it as it applies to what we've just been sharing uh, first. So first of all, the, the first thing that we have to recognize, or that we should recognize, whether whatever the group is, whether it's a small group of people or it's a large group of people, there's a number of different ways that we can reach those individuals. And, you know, we can reach them by cold calling a list that we buy with telephone numbers of those people. We can go to their homes and knock on their doors. We can go to events where they congregate. We can show up in their town where they have networking meetings. Or what we can do is we can use the search engines and, and put material online, content, articles, blog posts, et cetera, et cetera, that are basically attraction pieces for those individuals who are searching online for help. Okay, so I, I only say that to say that we're, when we market online, we never reach the entire population of a set of individuals. We only reach those individuals who are 
looking online for information. So, for example, let's just say that I'm a dog trainer. I have a local dog training shop, and 10% of the people in my neighborhood, when they're looking for dog training help, go online and search for dog training help. I can reach 10% of my neighborhood through the web, and if that generates the revenue and the happiness in my lifestyle that I'd like, then I don't need to reach out to the other 90%. But because I'm a local individual, I probably say, you know what, I'm also going to put flyers on people's doors. I'm also going to have a, I'm going to hire a telemarketer, call people. I'm also going to, um, you know, go to local doggy. Okay. When we're dealing with a worldwide population, then we probably get much further away from doing the offline things. But we still have to recognize that the only part of the population that we're going to reach is going to be those individuals who are online. Okay, so having said that, when we're marketing online, what I'm getting ready to share with you is only going to be relevant for that portion of people who use a search engine to find information. So now we've, we've, quali we've qualified the, per the portion of your group who is, is really a, a, a realistic target for you online, and those are people who are searching for information. Okay, so now the next question would be, if I was a hypnotherapist and I were searching for information online, what would I be searching for? Okay, so perhaps if I'm a hypnotherapist and I had a client come into my office or I'm having a client come into my office tomorrow and she has a symptom that um, I haven't really dealt with a whole lot in the past, so just because I'm a qualified therapist, doesn't mean that I know everything. And so if I know that I've got a new client coming in and I know that she has a symptom that I've never dealt with a whole lot, I might go online and type in how to help people that have XYZ problem. What is the prescribed protocol for XYZ problem? And you could probably think of a hundred, because of your background, you could probably think of another hundred questions that people might ask that they might go online for. Once you have identified some or all or a large portion or any portion of those types of questions that people in your niche might ask, you can then write article content, blog post content, et cetera, et cetera, that would answer those questions were they to search for it. Okay, again, we're only going to target, we're only going to, to meet or attract those individuals who go online and search for it. So now that they are going online, we write the article, we, we, we use the protocol that I just suggested a few minutes ago with Dave. We write an article that answers the problem in easy in articles, then we go over to fast submit articles and a few other places online to get to do what we can to boost the rankings of that article over to Ezine Articles. So when Mr. or Mrs. Hypnotherapy comes along and asks that question, they are going to receive the Ezine Articles answer that you've written as the number one answer in the search engine. Does, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. I didn't know if you'd have anything that would help me, and you really did. Um, <laughs> well, thank you very much. I really did. That's the process right there. What I've just shared, I'm so glad you asked that, Beverly, because it really ties in with what Dave asked. And really, when I was answering Dave's question, I was very, I was really technical, do this, do that. And you humanized it. By asking that question, I was able to then humanize it and say, okay, now these are the steps that we take, but here's why, and here's how it really works behind the scenes. And I'm so glad that you asked that question as well, because it allowed me to, to kind of expound on a little bit. So thank you very much on that, Beverly. Well, it's, I'm really glad that 